Okay, welcome to the spotlight for week number four. This is Fourth Dial Magazine's weekly fireside chat with some of the movers and shakers that are actually on the football field in the Mid-Pen Conference. I'm going to be your moderator. I'm Andy Shea. Our guest this week, he wears number four for the Hershey, Hershey Trojans, who, by the way, picked up their first win of the season last Friday by coming from two scores down to upset Cedar Cliff 21-20. Please welcome QB1 for the Trojans. He is senior Daniel, Daniel Painter to the spotlight. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us, and we really appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Really appreciate you guys having me. All right, this is how it's going to work, Daniel. I'm going to ask you some fun questions and some, you know, interesting and light questions about the Trojans. And at the end, we're going to put you on the spotlight hot seat, and we're going to get those few short answer questions that we like to close out with. But before I start lobbing some questions at you, Daniel, let me throw out some of your stats. Let's just uh, start by saying this. Daniel has a lot to do with the offense that is the Hershey Trojans in two, 2022. He's thrown for 688 yards. He rushed, he's rushed for a team high 155 yards, and he has six touchdowns. Just for your information, he's accounted for six of the nine touchdowns Hershey has scored on offense this season. So Daniel, off to a good start. And you know, number numbers wise for you, you guys are um one and three. You've had a couple close losses. You played Gettysburg um tough and you had a close loss to Waynesboro. But out of the gate, I gotta know. And I sometimes ask this, sometimes I don't. I'm curious about quarterback numbers. So you wear number four. Any reason that you wear number four as a quarterback? Um not particularly. When I started out football, I started with number 46. It's just the number I picked. And then uh, eighth grade year, I transitioned to quarterback. And then I just took one of those numbers. I took number four. And right. I just, I don't know. It's an interesting number. I was just wondering because, you know, one of the more famous number fours is Brett Favre. Did you know 46 is now the special teams number? It's like sort of a long snapper. 46 and 47, it seems, that have evolved into the sort of specialist number, like the long snapper or the punter or the kicker. It's 46 and 47. It used to just be 47, but now it's evolved into 46. I'm just yeah, throwing just it out there. About 46, a long snapper. So let's go back to last week. There's no better place to start. You guys are down 20 to 6 against Cedar Cliff 11 minutes ago. You kind of have been there before the season, like I mentioned. You had a couple close losses to Gettysburg and Waynesboro. I'm sure when you look back at the tape and reviewed everything, you're like, those are games we might have won, but we did not. So what was the difference this time? Cedar Cliff's a little bit different animal than Waynesboro and Gettysburg. That's a different football team. You're down 20 to 6, 11 minutes to go. What changes and what was the difference for you guys in your words? Um, I think just starting out, like Cedar Cliff was our first conference game of the first conference game of the year. So there's obviously a little more blood there. Um, than there is with Gettysburg and Waynesboro. So going into halftime, um, we we knew we wanted that, that more, and we knew that we could, like, all our mistakes were self-inflicted up to that point. So then coming out of halftime, we knew that if anybody was going to change the game, it was going to be us. And we came out and we did what we had to do. Um, we could have either went in the bag and just kept right. playing the way we started or we could do something about it. And that's exactly what we did. So you guys, you you guys made a couple stops defensively when you were still a score down as you were trying to come back. So in my estimation, that kind of might be the hidden key to getting you guys across the finish line for win number one this season. Can you talk about that and really how important that was, especially when it became a one score game? Yeah, our defense was, like, outstanding that game. I, off the turnovers in the beginning, they only scored inside their own 50 when they were given great position. So our defense played phenomenal um, and throughout that whole game even. What was – what were they doing differently that you saw? Because I know you played some defense and you played safety for the Trojans, but you're not playing this year because you're a senior and you're the QB1. And – Good decision by your dad. You can tell him, by the way. But um, what did you see in that sort of down the stretch that was that that was different defensively, that was better defensively, that was an impact that made a difference? I would say our pass defense definitely tightened up a lot. Like our run defense was great throughout that whole game, but our pass defense 
was starting to allow like less yards after catch and then also just in general allowing less catches and getting more pass breakups. Okay, one more question on this game. I, you got I want to talk about the two court conversion. You guys went for two after you uh made it a one score game, right? You were down 20 to 6, scored a touchdown, makes it 20 to 12. You guys went for two, am I correct? Yes. Get that that can get lost in all this, right? Like you're chasing the game. You you have to make defensive stance. You guys went for two and you set yourselves up to complete this comeback by converting the two point conversion and making it 20 to 14 with about nine minutes to play. So I'm asking about the two point conversion. Had you run it before this season? What happened and why did it work and, and what went down? Because it was a huge play to make a difference on the scoreboard. Yes. It, it, it wasn't any special two point conversion. It was just one of our normal goal line uh, plays, but we saw, I was just on the sideline. I was watching, thinking we were going to just kick a regular field goal. Then we saw right. that they jumped, got us even closer. And then I just looked over at our OST and he was just, he was looking back, two point conversion, get our group out there and then punch it in. And it was kind of just really quick. Like within a matter of seconds after the flag, we got up on the ball and snapped it right away and went. Isn't there a huge difference between just kicking it for one? And it's still a one score game, right? Like, you can still yeah. score a touchdown, maybe go for two later. But at that point in the game, am I wrong that that sort of is like a huge momentum builder for the team that converts it? And it's a little bit deflating if you're on the other end. Well, we still got a one-score lead, but now they're yeah. like, they get a touchdown, they win. It just takes a, it takes a huge relief off knowing that the deficit is six points rather than seven. Because six, you know it's a touchdown, All and right. then you could just kick a PAT to win it. But seven, you have to make the PAT to tie even so so your go-to target we have to talk about it marcus sweeney right um he's got almost half your completions have gone to him he's averaging more than 20 yards a catch and he's been on the other end of all five of your receiving touchdowns talk about why this go-to combination works especially when you're considering the other teams probably know it's coming they yes. know you're gonna look for him and they know you're gonna go to him and they still can't stop it. Um, well, me, me and Marcus have been playing together since like second, third grade, really long time. Um, we've been playing football and basketball together forever. So, but also like talking about now, the way that opens up is like I was during during the course of a game, I'll get the ball to other guys, and then maybe they'll loosen up their coverage against Marcus. But still, he's just. He's an always can count on going to be open guy. And even if he's not, he'll still make a play and grab the ball. Yeah. And it seems like you, uh, when you're going mid range or deep, you know, a little deeper at 20 yards per catch. Yeah. You're finding him when yeah. you really, really need it for those big ones. And, and, and those are difference makers. So, mm -hmm. all right. So your dad's the head coach of Hershey. We know that. And Mark, Mark Painter's the head coach of the Trojans. So that makes you, unfortunately, Daniel, the dreaded coach's kid. But I'm not <laughs> going to ask you, like, what's it like playing for your dad? I'm not going to ask you that. I want you to see if you got a story or if there's a rule or there's something that you guys do to make sure him being your dad and him being you're also the head football coach of the team you happen to play for, how that doesn't interfere with life outside of football. Because there's still a ton of life outside of football. Is there something you guys do? to make sure that football doesn't rule your house. Is there anything you could share on that front with you and your dad? To make sure that it doesn't rule, rule our house. That is, that's tough. Cause our mom is like strict about that. She, <laughs> she doesn't like football as much as we do. So you could say, but, but um, I don't know, when we're at practice. Does your mom really... set the barriers? Does your mom say, okay, yes. that's enough football talk. Yes. She, so, the answer is your mom. You're like the, go <laughs> the thing that keeps my dad and I from talking ball all the time is mom. Exactly. When she's in the room, we're we'll, we'll, we won't talk football. Ah, <laughs> that's a good answer. I love yeah. that because it's like, well, we don't really have one because we just we don't mind talking ball together and we don't care that ball goes everywhere. It's our mom that puts a no boss on it. So, <laughs> all right, let's look forward before we put you on the hot seat. The Cocoa Bean Bowl game, Milton Hershey, it's always a 50-50 game. And on paper, it looks like this game is going to be a toss-up again this year uh, as well. But my question is not about Milton Hershey. 
I want you to explain in your words why practice and preparation for the next game, which is Milton Hershey, is just a little different after a win. It's it's an individual thing, right? That's why I'm saying it's it's what you think, of course. Mm-hmm. But I, I just want your perspective to share with our audience because it is, and it is for a reason. And you guys struggled last year. You won one game. You came close already a couple times this year, and you didn't. But I know this week, especially because it is the Coco Bean Bowl, and it's Milton Hershey, that's always going to be different. But why do you think, in your words, is it different, practice different in the week leading up to the next game after you've gotten a win, when it's been so hard to win? Um, It was really just, like, getting over that hump and getting over that hump of our first win, which was really great and a lot relieved off of us. And... um. Was it like a pressure valve? Do you is it feel like there's a different pressure and and your like practice goes a little better and a little smoother because of it? Is that maybe part of it yes, as well? Yes. Yeah. So pre- like it's really one thing we said right after we got our first one in the huddle right after we right after we beat Cedar Cliff is don't let our heads get too inflated. Like don't be too focused on getting that that we got that one win. Don't be get too happy about it because we still have another week of work to prepare same or even better than we just did. So it's really just not about like being satisfied with only that one win, but knowing that you can put out that same result or better and definitely better in our case, because our second half was great. First half was not so good. And you have an imminently winnable game on the schedule, right? Like this is a winnable football game. You can look at some games, like say if you're playing McDevitt and you're like, okay, that's not necessarily a quote unquote (laughs) winnable football game. That's just the reality of where they are and where the rest yeah. of the league is. That's not – like, you were playing McDevitt this week. You're like, okay, that's not a winnable football game, but we're still going to give it our best. But this is a winnable football game of course it and is. a chance for you guys to build. So, all right, Daniel, let's throw you on the hot seat. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Your favorite home-cooked meal? Home-cooked meal? Um, chicken casserole. So, money, if money is no obstacle – any place in the world you choose, where are you going on your adventure? I would say Italy. Italy. Nice. I've been to Italy twice. It's wow. awesome. All right. Go there sometime. You'll love it. But don't go. You don't need to go to Rome. Go to everywhere but Rome and you'll have an awesome All right. Time. All right. College football on Saturday or NFL football on Sunday? Which one? College football on Saturday, 100%. Favorite sports team, any sport? The Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. The one word that best describes you, Daniel. Um, it's ooh, a toughie. That is a tough one. I would say committed. Committed. All right, last one. So that one was a toughie. This one's a fun one. When you go to Sheets, what's your go-to order? Give it to me. Sides, drink, whatever. Give me your oh, go-to yeah. order at Sheets. So I'm definitely going to get an app sampler of mac and cheese bites and like um, – mac and cheese bites and mozzarella sticks and all that um and then i will probably get a sub just a regular sub like uh italian style get some pickles on there some sweet peppers yeah sweet all right you got the side combo you got an italian sub with some pickles and some peppers all right daniel we really appreciate your time thank you so much for joining us on the spotlight Good luck to you and the Trojans this week. Stay healthy and play well in the Bean Bowl. Right, and uh, and good luck to you guys. And tell your dad I said hello. Thank you guys so much. Uh, will do. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much, Daniel. That was <laughs> Daniel Painter. He is the QB1 for the Hershey Trojans. He joined us on the spotlight. Make sure you check out all our high school football content on fourthdownmagazine.com. Follow along on social media or check out our YouTube page. For Adam, who is behind the Zoom curtain, and you can't hear hear or see, but I guarantee you, he is back there. I'm your moderator, Andy Shea, and I will see you.